Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we need to look at the tools that you can use to modify the clip art that you have inserted. Once you insert a picture, the Picture Tools Contextual tab appears with a format tab displayed. This tab contains the main functions that you can use to quickly and easily format the inserted pictures. Note that this context tab only appears when you have an image selected within your document. The buttons available in the Adjust group allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your document. You can click the Brightness drop-down button to choose another brightness setting for the selected image. You can also click the Contrast button to increase or decrease the level of contrast or gray area used in the image. You can use the Recolor drop-down to select from one of the many preset coloring tints to apply. You could also use the More Variations command to open a coloring choice from the palette of colors that appears. You can click the Compress Picture button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your document. In this dialog box, you can view your compression settings by clicking the Options button. This will display your compression settings in a new window where you can set them as desired. Then click OK to return to the Compressed Pictures dialog box. If you wish to compress the currently selected picture versus compressing all of the pictures within your document, you would need to check the Apply to Selected Pictures Only checkbox. Once you have the settings you desire, you can then click the OK button to compress the pictures in your document. Note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display, as smaller graphics files tend to load faster. This will also not work with clip art, just photographs. The last button in the Adjust section is the Reset Picture button. You can click this button to reset changes made to a picture. The next group on the Format tab is the Picture Styles group. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. If you simply hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles listed, you can preview how the style will affect your selected image directly in your document before you actually click on a style to select it. If you wish to create a custom picture shape, then click the Picture Shape drop-down button and select the desired picture shape to use from the listing of available shapes. If you want to select a border to place around your image, then click the Picture Border drop-down. From this drop-down menu, you can click on a color of the border that you want to use. Also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border, or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can do that by using this drop-down as well. If you roll over the Weight command, you can select a different line thickness from the choices available. Also, you could roll over the Dashes command to select a dash style line to use, versus using the default solid border. You can click the Picture Effects drop-down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories available for use for your selected picture. Just roll your mouse pointer over the category that you wish to view in order to display a listing of the assorted styles within that category. When you hold your mouse pointer over any style shown here, it will be shown as a preview of the selected image within your document. You can then click on the style that you like in order to actually apply it to the picture. In the Arrange group, you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected image in the document. You can click the Position button to select one from one of the preset options. If you have overlapping images in your document, then you can click either the Bring to Front or Send to Back buttons in order to change the order in which the images overlap each other in the stack. If you click the Text Wrapping drop-down button, here you can select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. You can click the Align button in order to choose from one of the available alignment options. The Group button is not often allowed to be used in conjunction with images, but is often useful when dealing with shapes. If you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. 
you can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected image. In the Size group, you will find the Crop button. You can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the Crop button to enable the cropping tool. To use it, click and drag on any of the cropping handles that appear around the graphic inward to crop them. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by dragging the cropping handles back outwards again, or by clicking the Reset Picture button. You can also use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the height or width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected image. Also notice that if you need to make very specific changes to the size of the image, you can do so through the Size dialog box. To open this dialog box, click the Size dialog box button found in the lower right corner. On the Size tab, you can enter the height and width into the text boxes provided. Notice that if you want to adjust the relational aspect, or the height to width ratio of the selected image, then you would need to ensure that the Lock Aspect Ratio checkbox is deselected in the Scale section first. Then you can enter the height and width independently if desired. In addition, you can enter a degree of rotation to apply to the image by using the Rotation Spinner box. In the Scale section, you can enter a percentage into either the Height and or Width text boxes. The image will then be scaled by the selected percentage. You can also check or uncheck the two available checkboxes in this section, as needed, when making size and scale changes. They allow you to lock the aspect ratio, and to determine if the ratio used is based on the current image scale, or on the scale of the original image. You can use the spinner boxes in the Crop From section to crop the image with great precision if needed. You can also click the Reset button at the bottom of this tab to reset any change made to the size of the image. On the Alt Text tab, enter a text description for the image. This is used by individuals who use a screen reader to view web page content. You should always enter a description of the image if you plan on publishing the Word document. When finished, click the Close button. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.